Now there is a very important issue that is happening in the country. Members of the press, as you are aware, there is the grand meeting being called in Massacre by the so-called Pirau, calling everybody to attend the rally, the political rally in Massacre. And I think it has led to the president cancelling his engagement in Rengo so that this of Massacre can be given prominence. We are General Muhozi Kainerugaba is mounting political platforms, heading a league as the chairman, the league. But we want to point out a few issues. And this want to be clear. Is General Kenel Gaba Muhozi a retired officer or is a serving officer? The answer is he's a serving officer. But this is the Constitution. The Constitution, Article 208, is very clear. The UPDF shall be nonpartisan. It shall have all the functions of an army, of a national army, not a partisan army, and shall be subordinate to the civilian authority. Now, this plus the UPDF Act, they are all clear. The UPDF Act, they are all clear about what mandate a serving UPDF officer can do. Now I want to put it clearly. General Mohs is free like any other Ugandan to aspire for any political office, but that he can't do while serving under the UPDF. At least his father, in 2006, said he had removed the army uniform and was putting on a kanzu. What is General Mohs now doing? A general of the UPDF, climbing political platforms, forming leagues and political parties, and being partisan. Why is he doing that? Where is the chief of defense forces? Recently, General Mbadi Wilson Mbasu was given a, de a delegated command of the UPDF. But he's looking on when the UPDF Act and the Constitution of the Republic of Uganda is being transgressed. Where is President Yoweri Museveni in this? As the Commander-in-Chief of the Armed Forces. What is he doing about this? The bigger question, members, is if General Mohs, while still aspiring for power, can have total disregard of the Constitution, how will he hold that power once he, once he, he gets it? Will he live by the Constitution? Even while now he's aspiring, but he's already transgressing this constitution. We are headed for difficult times. These are bad times. And what are those members of parliament doing? I saw them. The Honorable Nifaka warriors, the Honorable Sejova, the Honorable Sisenamuju, the Honorable... Javira, the Honorable Chinyamatama, the Honorable, the, the, the Honorable Shasim Sherure, and all those. Because on the steps of parliament, before you become an MP, you saw you to protect and defend the constitution. And they are the ones now who are complices in breaking this constitution. The accomplices now in breaking the constitution. So we are calling them to order. They may feel big now. They might feel they are well protected by the state. But the cardinal duty of an MP is you swear to protect and defend the constitution. 
What are they doing down there in Masaka? What are they doing? Can someone ask them for me? The Sechko is there wondering what you are doing. What manipulations are you doing to the Constitution? What games are you doing? Are you playing to Ugandans? So we are deeply concerned about the state of affairs. And lastly, my call is to General Mozi himself. I want him to look into the camera and look at himself. Is he the constitution in himself, General Mozi? Are you the constitution in yourself? Look into the camera and answer Ugandans. What will happen once you are the president that you are aspiring, that you badly so want? He's already a general, a four-star general. A general is the highest rank any militant or soldier can aspire to attain. You're already a general. You can retire from the army. You can join the partisan politics. But don't, don't, don't transgress the law of the land you, that you aspire to lead. You remember in the past, Brigadier Tumukunde and seven months detention in a safe house. General Sejusa was hounded into exile. Dr. Besije was done the same. So what is special now? My friend, we are subservient to the your father, but not to you. And to me, I don't know the latest developments. Because I have a personal story to tell. Some time back I had asked him, come and let's, let, let's join, let's make our own, let's start our politics. You be the MP Remyag. He said, I will never, 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 I don't want politics. He abandoned it. He joined the army. For me, I told him, okay, if you abandon it, let me take it up. I took it up, went and threw out to Tessa and Rwakosho from Remyaka, and that's why I'm an MP. An but the first option was Mhose Kainerugaba to be the one to stand in Remyaka. And I was fully supporting him. I wasn't selfish. I was telling him I would support you be the, the, the MP. He said he doesn't want politics. But now with the change of events, he's disregarding the constitution. And unfortunately, members of parliament are in town. The CDF is sleeping on his job. The commanding chief is sleeping on his job. And worse, the MPs are dancing on the grave of the political constitution, of the constitutionalism of this country. That's why we say that these things, as they happen, we must go on record. We must call to order. We are guiding the country. We are guiding the country and we are perturbed. So where, where, where is peace now? There is no parliament for one to say that, okay, I'm in parliament, I can sit here. There is no outside. The rule of law is going down. The rule of the constitution is going down. So this is a sad story which you want to categorically stand and tell Ugandans and the public that enough is enough. Which my president addressed himself to. We are not in the politics to clap hands for a particular family. We are in the politics to ensure that there is a sanity. Uh, when we see a serving army officer coming out contrary to the Constitution, Article 208, and contrary to UPDF Act, Section 99, which requires that anyone in a uniform should you desire to participate in politics, you have to resign or retire from the army. We are asking President Museveni. Why are you doing this to us? 
What are you trying to tell this country? Or you are trying to confirm what you earlier said, that for you these, these documents are just nothing. These ideals we are passed on to us by Ugandans who fought dearly at independence for us to attain independence. We would want any subsequent leader to preserve the constitution. When this matter of breaking the constitution is being done by your son, you leave us with very many questions. Yes, you want your son to succeed you. But why don't you follow the a normal procedure? What is difficult? Why do you want to keep in the army and at the same time aspire for political office? What is difficult? Is there unfinished business Mohoz has to do in UPDF? If it is there, then you tell him to wait. If you feel, and the way we are seeing events turning out, that you want your son to succeed you, then you tell him to resign from the army and respect the laws of this country. Now, the evidence before us is overwhelming that President Museven is carrying out two campaigns. His own campaign and the campaign of his son. And we are inviting all Ugandans to look at that scenario of being power hungry. Does he want to turn this country into a monarchy? Maybe we can change the constitution and establish a kingdom where President Museven is the king. And then his son will properly ascend to the throne as a, a, a crown prince. But the way the constitution is, or the, the, the precedents that we have seen in this country, Uganda is not yet a monarchy. We have monarchs like Ibusoka Kingdom. They can enthrone their, uh, their sons, the crown, the crown prince. Bunyoro, Uganda, we will not have issues. But when you seek an executive office over the president, and you want, you are running the campaign where you want your son to succeed you, that's very, very unfortunate. And uh, we, we, uh, I would want to agree with my honorable colleague that whereas we have been supporting his father and we do still support him, we are not ready to support General Mohose. We are not ready. Within the NRM, we are calling upon all members of NRM to go down and register and cherish our party dearly and continue to call upon members who are still sane in NRM that in NRM we are not going to allow this type of power, uh, of ascending to power in this form. And uh, we want to ask President Museveni 
You have been around for very many years as a president. God has been kind to you. Ugandans have been kind to you. Don't abuse our goodwill. And don't think that the goodwill we have had for you is the goodwill we are going to give to your son. No. No. I know you are using a lot of money to buy people. They have called a, a rally in Masaka. But six buses are ferrying people from Kagadi. If you have people in Masaka, why are you ferrying people from Kagadi? Six buses. And you know it is the order of the day, even from Karamoja. People will come from Karamoja to go to Masaka. You find them, they, when they will be speaking in Luganda, they will even not understand what is going on. A rally is going to cost a fortune. Ugandans. Ugandans are still wallowing under poverty. We have just started parish development model where we thought there would be hope for the ordinary Ugandans. Now you are diverting money into the campaign of your son. Fearing people from Kagadi, fearing people from Karamoja and the other districts to go to a particular rally. We want to thank senior members of the party, like General Kahinda Otafiri, like Al Haj Nadul, and others who have guided the country and said they did not fight. That is not the type of democracy they fought for. We also want to use this opportunity to call upon members of our party, NRM party, who are moving around that they are in Pilau. According to the NRM constitution, that is clickism, they are supposed to go for disciplinary uh, causes. The other matter is that we invite them to the issue of breaking the constitution. Because when they break the constitution, when you are there, when do they get power? This is what uh, uh, my president, Theodora Sechkubo, asked. If you are breaking, if you are not living by the law, when you are just an aspirant, when you become a full one, will you obey the law? Are we not going to see another Amin in this country? Let's leave the questions to the Ugandans. But we feel, and our critical guidance is that General Mohose should choose where should he belong. This thing of thinking, of behaving like a hyena, which started smearing this side, uh, uh, the smell of ants, this side, the smell of meat, then he uh, did like this the legs, and it ended up breaking into two pieces, splitting into two pieces. Choose where you want to belong, the army or the politics. And come out clearly. What are you fearing? If Tinka Simile Balinavas can go to his constituency without anyone, without being carried by anyone, and he wins a constituency four times, for you, the army general, what are you fearing? If you are incompetent, why don't you leave us alone? What are you fearing? You say you are a general. What are you fearing? You have all the, um, uh, all the money. Hmm? What are you fearing? Why don't you resign? Hmm?
and uh, we want to thank you so much for listening to us.